Welcome, everyone. Today, uh, I'm doing a speed drawing of a uh, Bender from Futurama toy that I have. Uh, it's a kid robot toy. They make a lot of different uh, cartoon stuff, and it's it's just got a really cool style. Yes, I am one of those people who have uh, just a bunch of toys sitting around their computer, and uh, this is one of them, and I thought it would be a fun thing to vectorize so that's what we're doing so hopefully you've been paying attention to some of my other tutorials um i, I think if you have a basic grasp of affinity designer you're going to kind of get what's going on here and what i'm doing and you're going to learn the basics i think i am in the future going to do another tutorial uh with a little more specifics on this i'm still not sure uh, I have another tutorial, hopefully, coming out next week that uh, is another robot that you're going to recognize, um, but we'll just wait till that comes out. I don't want to do any spoilers, but that's going to be more of a uh, another beginner tutorial. It's going to be pretty simple, and uh, it's going to get big impact, but getting in back into Bender here, uh, I'm just going to kind of let this play out and just kind of go over what I'm doing. Uh, just roughly. So once you get a good picture, and I do want to say in Affinity, Affinity Designer specifically is missing one tool that I really want to see is uh, the, uh, the skew tool. You can't take a group of items and like skew and warp them like you can in illustrator and even photoshop you can do it in affinity photo so i guess you could do it affinity designer and affinity photo use the exact same uh, file um so you can just open either you you can open either save file in either project so uh, like as in Photoshop, if you have a, you save out to a PSD, you can like import into Illustrator and Illustrator can import into Photoshop in a certain sense, but affinity is the same file literally. So you can go back and forth, but both programs don't have both of the same tools and man, I really want that, uh, skew and warp tool over in affinity designer here. So what what I'm saying here is when you take your picture and you're doing an affinity designer vectorization, you want to make sure it's straight on. You don't want to do um you don't want to do a like like a side shot or like an up or down kind of thing. You can definitely do that, but I don't think affinity's optimized for it like uh Illustrator is. Other than that, besides that, I definitely like uh, Affinity over Illustrator. Um, I feel like Illustrator's a little bloated. And yeah, I can do a lot of stuff that Affinity can't. But I think Affinity's going to get there and overall be a better uh, program in the end. I think. We'll see how that goes. Um, Affinity Photo, though, that's a little different. I definitely would recommend that to anybody who's... Uh, doing hobby kind of stuff, but um, I, I don't think it beats Photoshop, uh, even though I'd like it to in the future. Photoshop, if you're a professional. So getting back into the vector stuff here, though, I'm just kind of going through and I'm kind of using using shapes, if you can, before using the pen tool. So if you're doing something simple like this, like a robot, um, if you see in the beginning, I, I traced out the shape of the head and then I kind of realized, you know, that wasn't quite the right move. So I went back in and I started using shapes for it. Um, I, that's that's kind of what you want to start trying to do is don't trace out parts unless you have to. And uh, just try to kind of get shapes going and then kind of layer them up like right there. How I'm kind of putting you know, putting them behind. Um, just with that antenna there, 
as well. If you do make a shape, um, you might want to twist it around a little bit or add a couple more points. All you do is you use the, uh, the, the little white arrow to do that. And you just click on the shape to do that. The big thing is you, if you make a shape, you have to convert it to curves before you can do that. So you just want to right click on it and go convert to curves. And then you can do, uh, you know, you can add more points and move them around and stuff. So right here, uh, Th this leg ends up getting done a different way, but, uh, okay. So like right here, I'm doing the outside of the arm. Uh, you know, I couldn't really find a shape for that. So in, in, in certain instances, you're going to want to just go ahead and draw out the shape. Um, also I want to point out while I was doing that, I'm using the pen tool, but, when you click on the pen tool, there's a couple different modes and they're up in the like top right, kind of top right, uh, middle-ish area. And you're going to want to hover over them and pick one out that says uh, smart. And uh, what the smart pen tool is doing is just letting you easily click around an object without giving you the beezer handles every time you, you put a click mark down. You can still go in and adjust the Beezer or Bezier. Uh, people pronounce it two different ways. I, th I think the correct term is Bezier, but I've been calling it Beezer all through high school and everything. So uh, that's just what I call it. So you know what I'm talking about, though. Um, here, another thing that happened to point out is his arm is a different shade than the hand, but instead of going through and making two different shapes and coloring them different, I'm just using the gradient tool and I'm kind of doing like a real harsh, uh, gradient on it. That way I just end up with one shape. Um, okay. Here to quickly do the lines, his little robot arm lines. Um, all I'm doing is taking uh, two things. I'm going to tell you what I just did right there and why those lines disappeared. But um, uh, I'm just doing a bevel and emboss on lines. And that way you're getting that nice uh, bevel shape. So it looks like it's cutting in. Okay. So what I did was I just drew out those lines and overlapped them. And if you take a couple, like let's say you take those four lines that I drew and you drag them over the shape and you drop them into the shape itself, you might want to kind of go by and, and if you, if you don't know how to do this, just watch that part again, real quick and slow-mo. But, um, if you drop them in, it's going to automatically like mask, mask those to the shape. Um, and that's how I got like them lined up quickly like that. Uh, here I'm just kind of going through doing a highlight, put a little bit of blur on it. Uh, that's something I really like about affinity is they have good, um, they have good effects and you can put them on both objects, just standalone objects. And, uh, you can put them on the group itself and, um, yeah, they're really, the effects are, are definitely powerful. So he's coming together pretty good. Um, and I think I, I got to go through and get that foot. So it's, it's kind of looking like after I get the foot in the door, um, he's going to be looking close to being done. The, then we're going to get into the, the pixel persona. And that's where Affinity really beats Illustrator. Um, you can go through and you can like literally paint with pixels similar to how Photoshop does. So we're going to see that pretty soon. And uh, again, I'm just kind of doing the same thing that I did with uh, the um, arm and just kind of like put that gradient on that way. I'm not actually making two different shapes. And here I just copy and pasted one of those that way. The, uh, and the, oh, see, and then there we go again. I dropped it down as you can see how they're, they're shifted over a little bit. 
that means they're part, they're like masked to the object that I'm dropping them in. So that's a good way to kind of get some uh, simple objects that have a little bit more complexity in them easily. And in the next tutorial I'm going to do, I'm definitely going to do like a focus on that. So here I'm going through using layer blend modes to kind of, you know, make highlights. Um, and again, this, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of basing off the picture that you take. Um, I like doing this cause it's kind of like a still life vectorization. It's not another like drawing or anything that I'm redrawing over in vector. Um, and that, that picture was taken with an iPhone. So it's not, you know, the most accurate for light, the light, there's not a direct light source hitting it or anything. So you kind of use, got to use your artistic creativity and, uh, you know, just kind of envision how that light would be bouncing off of them and where the highlights would go. But when it comes to a robot, it's not too hard to figure out, you know, it's, you're basically kind of just lighting like a cylinder and, uh, you just got to think the shapes overall. Uh, I think we're really close here to getting into the pixel persona and yes. Okay. So we just moved over to the pixel persona. I ended up doing the marching ants over his body. And then now I'm just going in with a grunge brush first, just to give him a little bit of texture. Um, and I kind of go back and forth with it. Cause right there, I think I deleted a lot of it. It just wasn't, it was a little too much. Um, but basically for the most part, I go through this with, a normal airbrush tool. And I think I just give them a little bit of grunge because if this was a different robot, I might do a little more grunge to him. but Bender wasn't really, he, he didn't need a lot of grunge. So I just stuck with a basic airbrush, uh, brush. Um, and I'm kind of going through here and just kind of putting in, you know, highlights, um, you know, dropping the blend mode down and just, just playing with it. And this right here, what I'm doing is why I really like affinity designer over illustrator, even though affinity designer doesn't quite have all of the features. Um, man, I, I really like being able to do the brush work back and forth as easy as easily as I can. You can still do this with, Photoshop and Illustrator, but you're just bouncing back and forth a lot. And I don't know. I just really like the speed of uh, Affinity. And hopefully in the future, Affinity is really going to, you know, start bridging the gap with uh, Illustrator. But I will say if you're a hobbyist, uh, just looking to get into Vector, I would definitely start with Affinity uh, Illustrator is just really expensive, especially for beginners. And anything you learn, they, they set up Affinity like uh, like Illustrator in a certain sense. It's got an Adobe feel to it. So if you start out with Affinity and if you do outgrow it before they update it to what you need, um, you, you'll have a really good grasp of how to use Illustrator right when you get into it. So. I recommend Affinity, you know, plus Illustrator, Photoshop, you, you can get Photoshop for 10 bucks a month, but you can't get Illustrator for 10 bucks a month. Illustrator is going to be 30 bucks a month and uh, Affinity is $50 total. So, you know, especially if it's a hobby. Um, okay. So as you can see now I'm using, uh, I believe I use, it's called the grunge seven brush and uh, I'm bouncing back and forth between that and the airbrush to give him a little bit of, kind of texture and just kind of keep closing the gaps on it. Um, so if you go to my website, which is vectorart.club, not .com, .club, vectorart.club, um, I'm going to have a, a final picture of him. There's just a very few things that I, I'm going to tell you about here, but I didn't actually do them in this video. Uh, I kind of enhanced a couple things 
after I'm done with this, um, I put just a few more. There's just like maybe three or four more highlights around his visor and around his uh, body that I just use a um, uh, a stroke and um, like a real bright. It's not quite white, but it's really close to like a white just to highlight it. And uh, that's the only thing that wasn't part of the speed video that uh, I just didn't have a recording when I did it. And uh, you, you'll be able to spot it right away by looking at the final video. Um, so that website again, vectorart.club. And I do have a lot more vector tutorials coming up. So uh, I'm going to get the next one will be a tutorial tutorial, not a speed video. And uh, oh, you know what? I take that back. OK, so I guess I do. I think I put a few more highlights in uh, than what gets done in this video. But basically, I'm doing that. I'm just kind of putting the uh, just lines, just give it a little more standout. So uh, if you like what I'm doing, hopefully you learned something by watching this. Um, you know, you go feel free to follow me. I got a lot more affinity stuff coming up. Um, check out the website vectorart.club the background was pre-done uh, i'll probably show you guys how to do that in a future video but it's basically just um, a bunch of triangles and their opacity is low so i hope you learned a little bit and had some fun